Today I'm going to be showing you how to code your own gen server with script. And to host the server, I'm going to be using Minehut, which is a free server hosting platform. If you've either never heard of Minehut, or you've been living under a rock and have no idea what a gen server is, basically it's a server where you get a random plot of land, and a generator that generates items every couple of seconds, and you can sell those items to upgrade your gens. That's what I'm going to be showing you how to code today. First you need the plugins script, of course, skb, skquery, and plot squared. So first we're going to want to create the world that you actually are able to claim your plot in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is create the world that you actually claim your plot in. So to do that, we use a plugin called plot squared. So basically to create the world, you do slash plot squared setup. And then you just, I'm going to just put in the default values for this because I don't really mind. You can mess around with this if you want, but I'm just going to put in all the default values. Okay, so once you've created the world, you should be spawned into a world that looks similar to this. So basically now what we want to do is we want to hop into our uh, text editor of our choice. I personally use Visual Studio Code just because I find it easier, but you can use whatever text editor you want. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the gen items themselves. So to do that, we're going to do unload. So this will execute when you reload the script. So this sets a variable uh gens wheat so this will be the wheat gen so this basically sets the variable to a hay block named wheat gen so in your inventory this will just be a hay bill with the name it'll be yellow it'll be bold yellow and it'll just be called wheat gen okay so what i've added here is i've just added like a lure so basically the lure on an item is the text underneath the name so basically this lure would show up as this will just be like some lines just separated. Then it would say produces wheat every 10 seconds, upgrade cost 500 coins, and another line. Uh, this this uh, Unicode character I'll put in the description of the video so you can easily copy paste it. Now I'm going to copy paste this line again because now we're going to create the coal gen. Okay, now I've just changed the name to coal, I changed to a coal block, and I made it dark gray and coal gen. And now I'm going to change this to all on upgrade costs. I'm going to make it 1000. So now that we've created two gens, we're going to want to create the items that draw from the gens now. So basically, we're going to set a variable. So this just sets the variable items wheat to wheats named, and it's going to be yellow wheat. And now here I've just added some alert to the item. So basically, it's just the lines, and then the sell price will be 10 coins. And now we can just copy paste this line again and just make the call. Okay, so I just changed it to dark gray, coal, 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 and changed the sell price to 20. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a command so operators on your server, admins, etc. can uh, get them, give themselves gens. Okay, so this is just the first line, so command slash give gen, so when you type slash give gen in game, and then this is just an argument, so in game, so in game, if you were to type slash give, give gen, and then you could put wheat there, and it will give you a wheat gen. So this makes it so only admins on your server or operators can use this command. And then we write trigger for what the command actually does. And we're going to make it if argument one is set. So this makes sure that the player actually puts in text for this. We're going to give player. Maybe we can copy paste this. Give player. Maybe we can just do argument one. So basically what I've added here is this is an else statement. So basically, if our argument one is not set, this will run. So basically, it just tells the player invalid arguments and then just tells them the usage of the command. Okay, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so you can actually place the gents. So on place, the players is. Okay, so this is where it becomes a bit complicated. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use a function to actually place the gen. So this here doesn't make sense right now, but basically the function place gen and then in uh, quotation marks wheat, so that that's the gen we're going to place because it's a hay block. Then just the player and the event blocks location. So now we're going to create the function. So function place gen, and then the variable n will be the text. The variable p would be the player, and the variable l would be a location, which is the event blocks location. Okay, so this uh, if, and then a variable u slots, and then the p, which is the player, so the player's uid. 
and then if it equals max slots, then the player's UID. So basically these two variables, we're going to set them later. So this is just checking if the amount of gens is equal to the maximum amount of slots, which will prevent them from placing the gen. So this line sends an action bar and an action bar is basically the text above the player's hop bar. So it sends, uh, it's basically tells them that their gen cap has been reached and then tells them they use slots and their max slots. So basically it's like 10 out of 10 and then sent it to the player. So this just plays a sound to the player, entity.villager.no, at volume one, pitch one to player. This uh, sets the block's location to air. So basically it makes it so they cannot place the gen. And this gives the player the gen back. So now we're gonna create an else statement. So if they have not used all their gen slots, so basically what these five lines do, so this line, it adds the location of the event block to a variable called gens placed, and then this will be the gen name. So gens placed wheat, if they placed a wheat gen, then the player's UID, uh, and then it's a list. So you can add as much as you want to it. Then this adds one to the amount of slots the players used. Then this sends another action bar saying they placed a gen and the amount of slots they used out of their max slots. Then this plays another sound to the player, and then this line just spawns particles where you place the gen. Okay, so now we want to copy paste this line just so we can do it with a coal block too. Coal block, and then we can make this coal. So now we're going to make it so a player can break a gen. So we're going to say on left click if event block is a block. Then we are also going to make a function for breaking a gen. So break gen wheat player event block location. Then we're going to do the same for a call block. So this is the break gen function function break gen and it's basically the same we had for place gen. So what these two lines do, so this line removes one from the player's used slots and then this removes the gen's location from the gen's placed variable. So and then these three lines, so basically this line just sends an action bar to the player, this one so basically what these three lines do, so this line sends an action bar to the player saying they picked up a gen, and this just plays a sound for the player, and this uh, sends particles basically at the block that they broke. Then this line gives the player the gen that they broke, and this line sets it to air. Okay, so now we're actually going to put this variable to use. So basically, this is going to be where we actually drop the items on top of the gens. So every 10 seconds, loop all players. And then we're going to loop all the blocks in a radius of 30 blocks around every player. So this basically makes it so a gen is inactive if a player is more than 30 blocks away from it. So this just loops the variable uh, gens placed wheat in the loop, loop players UID. And this variable, as we did up here, contains all the locations of all the gens the players placed. So basically what these two lines do, so basically this line sets a variable to the block above every single gen. And this line just drops one of the wheat variable we set up here at this location without velocity. So basically what without velocity means is it doesn't like spawn like... So basically with velocity, normally an item would like go out in random directions. So basically this just spawns it and it just stays completely still basically. Okay, so now we're going to create the command to actually sell the items in your inventory. So command dash sell trigger so we're going to set the variable total to zero this is going to make sense in a bit so now we're going to set the variable wheat amount to the amount of wheat in the player's inventory then we're going to remove all the wheat from the player's inventory and then this is where this variable comes in so what these lines do so this adds the amount of wheat in the player's inventory so that's just going to be a number times by 10. So 10 is the sell price of the item. And it's going to add that to the total variable. And it's going to add the total variable to the amount of coins that the player has. So this is just the variable we're going to use for coins. So coins and then the player's UID. And then we're just going to copy paste these three lines and just rename it all to coal. So coal, coal, and coal. And then we're also going to change the price to 20. Then what these two lines do so basically this line sends a title to the player in sales summary with the subtitle and then just shows them how much money they earned from it. And this just plays a sound to the player. So what we're going to create now is we're going to create an action bar above the player's hotbar. Basically shows them how much how, how many coins they have at all times and how many gen slots they have. 
So every two seconds, loop all players. Send action bar. Okay, now I know this looks extremely long, but it's actually really simple. So basically, in yellow, it, it shows the amount of coins that the player has, so the coin's variable. Then in grey, it says gen slots. Then in yellow, their use slots slash their max slots. Then we're going to say to loop. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to code it so people can upgrade their gens. So basically, this is just the on right click event, then just checks if they actually clicked a block. And then the, this just checks if the player is crouching. If clicked block is haylock. Oops. Okay, so a mistake I made is that these mustn't have dashes in between. So basically what these four lines do is this is this line removes the clicked blocks location from uh, the variable. And this line adds the clicked blocks location to the new variable, which will be for coal. So it changes wheat to coal. Then it sets the clicked block to a coal block and sends the title upgraded with the subtitle wheat to coal to the player. And then here we're just going to stop this stop this event so no code after this will run if it this finishes so now we're going to create a delay for upgrading gen so people can't just spam upgrade because that could sometimes glitch the script so at the top we're just going to add these three lines so it's going to check this variable upgrade click the place uid is false so if, if it is false then it will set it to true and then wait a tick so at the end we add these lines so wait 0.5 seconds then it will set it back to false and then now we can just copy paste this line and then we don't actually have a gen that for after call. So basically what we can do, so we can just remove this and just make this, this title that sends them not coded yet. Call to question mark. So now what we're going to create is the slash dot command that actually gives you a plot and gives you your first gen. So command slash start. Here we go. If the variable start is uid is not true i'm gonna copy paste this set it to true so basically you can only run this once execute player command slash p auto so this is the command to actually claim a plot with plot squared let's either give player gens wheat then we're gonna wait one second and then we're going to send the title, place your gen to begin for three seconds. Okay, so this is the last thing we need to do before we're finished with the script. So basically, we're going to set the variables when a player joins. So, unjoin. And this sets the upgrade click variable to false, sets the coin. So if the coins is not set, set it to zero. If the use slots not set, set it to zero. And if the max slots is not set, set it to 10. Basically, you can change 10 to whatever number you want the player's default max slots to be. Another another mistake I made is in the slash cell, this second wheat should be cold instead. And then now you want to control A, control C to copy it all and head over to your Minehut panel. You want to go to file manager, plugins, scroll down to script, scripts, and you want to create a file, preferably call it gens, call it gens2.sk. You have to have .sk. In gens2, you can Control V to paste it. Then you want to click save and then head over back to Minecraft. And then to reload the script, you should slash SK reload and then the script's name. It should be reloading and then successfully reloaded. Then normally for you guys, it would say uh, all of these variables would be none for you. So basically to fix that, what you need to do is you need to disconnect and rejoin. And it should automatically fix for you. Okay, now let's test the commands that we created. So slash give gen wheat. Then it should give you a wheat gen. Okay, so now when you type slash start. Okay, we receive our gen and it says place your gen to begin. Okay, cool. And now when we place our gen, it says place the wheat gen one out of 10. And then every 10 seconds, it should spawn wheat on top of the gen. And then there, it spawns wheat on top of the gen. Then we can do slash soul. Fill summary plus 10 coins. And then once we have 500 coins, if you shift right click on it, upgraded wheat to coal. And then starts dropping coal. And then now we could sell this coal for 20 each. And if we try upgrade this coal gen, it says not coded yet. 
if you guys want to create more gens, you can just basically copy paste all the variables for the coal gen and all the cell things. If you want extra help with this, you can DM me from my Discord server. I'll leave a link in the description. And anyways, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope this helped you guys with creating your own gen server. And yeah, cheers.